Hello and welcome back, it's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're going to be playing Pursuit. Now you can see Sleuth here, uh, I think it looks like Sleuth is the one that's being pursued himself as opposed to pursuing somebody else, although that look of determination, maybe there is somebody ahead that's just out of camera shot. Regardless, um, Sleuth running so fast that there is motion blur all around him, that definitely doesn't sound like me. I think if I ever want to do anything at pace, you know, maybe if I really have to, let's be fair here, it's not necessarily something I'm going to volunteer to, maybe give me rowing. I think that would be my game, not running. Now, today's puzzle is from Gerhard 1963, and we've actually played a couple of puzzles from him already before. I think I'm just making the assumption it's a he given the name Gerhard, but obviously could just be a pseudonym or a handle for, you know, a, a female. Um, what else am I going to mention before we take a, look at, to take a look at today's puzzle? I can't quite get the reference, by the way, to Pursuit, but hopefully when we actually take a look at the puzzle, maybe you guys can actually spot it, and you can help me out here. Uh, last thing, you might notice like a slight orange tinge to the screen. I think that's just me trying new settings to basically have like night mode on, so blue lights are basically reduced. I think it will show up in the video, but I have no idea. We're going to find out together. Anyway, let's take a look at today's puzzle and rule set with Pursuit from Gerhard 1963 and the following set of rules. Standard Sudoku rules apply. That means place the digits one to nine once each in every row. Column and three by three box. Obviously one to nine once each in each of these. Then we've got cages. So digits in cages cannot repeat and must sum to the value shown in the upper left corner of the cage. I'm taking a look at all of these cages and it's not really very obvious which one to use. So let's go with two and one. These two cells are one and two. This would have to be an eight to make sure that these three cells add up to eight. These five cells add up to 16. Emphasis on the fact that digits cannot repeat. So this cell and this cell, they're in different rows, columns and boxes but they are still inside the same cage, so they have to be unique digits. And then we've got Dutch Whispers. That's not the reason that there is the orange tinge, by the way, on the screen. That's just everything is orange, not just the lines. So usually shown as orange lines, definitely the case here. Adjacent digits along a Dutch Whisper line must differ by at least four. So if this cell is a two, for example, the following two neighboring digits must be six, seven, eight, or nine, to be four or more away. Emphasis on the four or more away, because if this is a nine, for example, nothing wrong with having a five in here. So fives are allowed on Dutch whisper lines, and I don't have to oscillate between high digits and low digits. I can do something like step through a five and essentially not go back to a high digit. So keep a watch out for that. That's all the rules we have for today. So, as always, if you want to play along, link will be in the description down below for you to do so. With that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. So, 16 cage in 5 cells, I'm going to say is forced. This has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. And I'm sure the 6 has to be on the Dutch whisper line because even with a 1, yes, I could have a neighbor of 5, but I couldn't do anything else. And the only way that I can see this working is essentially the high digit, the six is in here, surrounded by a one, two pair. Um, clearly don't need the six in any of these anymore now that I've used it. And this is going to be a three, four pair. And that does add up to 16. The 34 cage, I'm gonna say is also forced. So six, seven, eight, nine, gets me to 30 and then a four. So let's think about what that looks like. So four, six, seven, eight, nine is essentially what we're after. Now, I'm guessing that this four is gonna be in here with an eight and nine, because again, yes, there is a nine, but I don't have a five. So essentially I'm gonna to have to have only one low digit, which has to be in the middle. And therefore, obviously none of these are four anymore. The only two that are four or more away is the eight, nine pair. And this would have to be the six, seven pair. And actually that six gives me seven and six. Now, you may remember me talking about the fact that Dutch whispers don't have to oscillate between 
low digits, high digits, as is the case here. Look at what we have there. A low digit, something, and then a high digit. And if you try anything other than 159 here, it's absolutely going to break. So, you know, let me just demonstrate. If I put a 4 in here, too close to the 1 and 2. If I put a 6 in here, too close to the 8 or 9, even if I go with the extreme digit, the 9. The only way this works is a 5, 1, and 9. And obviously that 9 means that's 8 because these are unique digits. That 1 means 2. 8 in here means that this is a low digit, can't be a 5. It could be any of 1, 2, 3, 4. And 2 in here, kind of same deduction. This has to be a high digit, and it can include a 6, 6, 7, 8, 9. Which also means that this is, I was going to say it's a low digit, but it doesn't have to be. I could do 9, 5. So, and same is true in here. I could do 1, 5. So not necessarily forced. Well, you see, one thing that is different about the 33 cage versus the 34 cage, you know, obviously there's, there's the obvious difference, which is that adds up to 34, this adds up to 33. So I have one degree of freedom that I didn't have inside the 34 cage. But the awkward part is I'm starting with a high digit. So if I don't use the five in here, then my best case scenario, and I really do mean best case scenario, is something like four, nine, and five, if I don't try and make this a high digit, which I can't anyway, this is gonna be best case five, then a nine, then a, all oh, right, okay. So four, five, nine is basically my best case scenario in this cage, on this line, which adds up to 18. And then the remaining digits that I have, the 7 and 8, add up to 15 and 18, that is exactly 33. So the fact that this is not a low digit and not a 5, I'm forced to place low slash middling digits in here and a high one in the middle. And then that entire cage is entirely forced. Lovely. Essentially, the 6 that was in here became the 5. That's how we use that. Pardon me, that's how we used that. Um, I'm so sorry, I forgot the term for it. Degree of freedom. Now, we probably have something very similar going on with the 18 cage, but we actually have two degrees of freedom this time compared to the 416 cage. Now, my thinking... Well, this can't be 9. Because that's the 9. And this is forced. I can't make... I mean, I may as well just write it in. And that is forced. There's no way of getting to 33 cage otherwise. And because that's 9, I can't... That's not 9. I can't do something like 1, 5, 9, and then a very low digit. Like 1. So I actually have relatively high digits in here. Relatively, of course. All right, so we said when this is 162, which obviously doesn't work here because this cannot be a low digit next to 1, 2, 3, or 4. That's already adding up to nine. <clears throat> now, if this is a low digit, and we go with the absolute lowest, let's go with a one, and let's go with a double one here, and therefore a five there, and then let's say it's a six here. Actually, that's not gonna work with four, five. I mean, with the four, five in here. But anyway, ignore the surrounding cells for a second. If we just go with the absolute minimum I can get away with, which is 5, 6, and 1, I'm already at 12. And then it really doesn't leave me a lot of space in here to get to 18. Essentially, I've got 6 left, which will be 2, 3, 4. Now, the reason this doesn't work, we've, we're kind of establishing, is this cannot be 5 or 6. 
this is a low digit or yeah, I'm not quite figuring this out I'm sure we have enough information to solve it from here it's just kind of struggling to see it so because this is four or five technically I could do five one and then six yeah that would have worked five six would have worked and if I don't do exactly what I just said five one and six well that would be four or it doesn't matter that would be a high digit let's say even if it's nine then I'm back to a low digit and what if I do one five nine how would that look? That would be 16. That's too big. So I can't reverse the order in these three cells. Essentially, low, low, low is kind of what I need to do. And then two highs. And if I try and flip it anywhere in here, 1, 5, 1, 5 and 1, 6. Yeah, it doesn't flip it because that can't be nine. Only really flips if I use one five nine. Right, so that's so either because this can't be nine, this can't be nine. I mean this could be nine, but that would be five nine and then one, which is fantastic, but then I can't flip it again when I time I get here. One five nine was too big because that's already fifteen. Then I have space for three, but I don't have one and two available. So I think it's correct to do this. These are low. These are high. Because this is low and this is high, I do need to flip it here. So that's the five, that's the one, that's the nine. Did I do this correctly? No, because I was saying five or six. Yeah, I want to try and minimize this. And it's not five, so this is six. But remember, we had a degree of freedom. So this is six, seven. Just doesn't feel right. Why am I, why am I wasting that degree of freedom as such? So 12, and then these two cells add up to six. And it can't be one, five. It would have to be two, four. So it would have to be something like that. Anyway, because of this is definitely a five, that's a four which means that's a three, that's a four. That can't be the case. What is going on? Four in here means three, means four, means five. That's probably why I'm losing this degree of freedom. So this has to be a high digit, but this doesn't have to be the six. This could be the five. And then that can only be a nine, which does work. There's nothing stopping this from being the nine. Then I go to five and then I have one, but then I don't have six. It would have to be seven. So that's my degree of freedom gone. And this is one and this is two, three. That works. Not doing Sudoku just kind of threw me off. This has to be nine because that's a five now. If I can type. And I think that's the cages done. Seven means that can't be four. Then I'm going to lose these colors. I don't need them anymore. And I think that is all accurate, as in, in the sense that this was all forced. It's just the last cage threw me off for some reason. Right. Um, shall we do some Sudoku? One thing that's kind of taking a bit by surprise. Never mind. I shouldn't. Eight and seven. So I think seven, none of these cells, which means seven is one of two. Eight. And eight means eight is one of three. Now I can't have eight and seven consecutive to each other on the same Dutch whisper. So essentially one of them has to hide in the center digit. That has to be seven or eight. And then we need, well, nine, nine. Oh, 
oh, excuse me, nine. So nine is definitely in here. Five can't ever be on a square um, because the challenge I have, and I, yeah, I am going to write this out, is, never mind, here, oh, goodness me, there, is because I'm in the same box, these would have to be different cells, and therefore one of them would be one, one of them would be nine, but then what would be this digit without repeating the five? You know, fives as in one, five, nine only ever works on triangles. If they're in the same box, and they will have to be unique digits. So essentially, I have a five, nine pair in here, and that's the nine, and that's the five. And then I have a seven, eight in the middle. And essentially, I have two low digits. I don't know which one's which. I'm going to use green and purple to talk about them and think about them for a bit. And because there is a seven, I can't have the four in essence on here. So the four is off there and that can't be the four. So that's the four. That's the high digit, that's a five. Because this is high, essentially I've got three high digits and two low. This is another low digit that is not two or four, it's one or three. Okay, which means what are the digits that we have on here? Well, technically I can get away with six and seven if I hide the three in here and essentially have a one, two pair. That works. Equally, I could go with, oh, it actually must be, I can't, where is six in the box? It's on the Dutch whisper line. And if there is a six, it will see both low digits. So I can't have a three on it. So that's a three, that's a two, that's a three. That's not a three. And then I must have one and two somewhere in opposite ends. And then six, seven, or eight. Well, definitely the six, but not necessarily. And then the question mark on the seven or eight. Right. I, I feel like I'm making this harder than it seems, but let's do a bit of pencil marking. So two can't be either of these cells. So two is in one of these two cells. And then the opposite would have to be the one. Now, we said the six, I can't see any, I mean, this can't be six. So six would, if it's purple is high, six would have to be here. And then this would have to be seven because eight is not available. Then you can see that seven is not available in the green cells. So this would have to be a six, eight pair. If I can type six, eight pair as such. So that's a complete pencil mark. And I didn't need it because if green is low, that's one and two and it breaks this cell. So green is high. And therefore this is one and two. This is a six, eight pair. This is a seven. Right. That would have, I, I leave Sudoku way too late. And I think it just makes things a lot harder. Right. Um, I will learn that lesson at some point. And then I have a one. And a six, and the six has to be up here, and this is the one, which means that's the two. Now, these two cells are one and three. These two cells, well, that's the four, that's the five. We know that these are, I say we know that these are, I don't know anything. Essentially, I was still, I was wondering if this is one, two, five, or one, three, four, but the two is in here. And because there is two and five, I can't have a double one with two and five hiding in here. So this is one, three, four. That's not the one. Two and five are actually a pair in here. And then I have seven, eight, nine, except eight and nine can't be there. That's seven. That's nine. That's eight. With that being a nine, this can actually be a five still. Right, uh, this cell is six or eight. We don't actually know what it is. This is the one. This is another six or eight. We also don't know what this is. Then we have another six, eight plus a four. The four says that's four, that's eight, that's six. That's eight, six, eight. And this is three, six. Can't resolve it. 
18 cage, 18 cage, like, I mean, these cages in general, like, I'm sure they're going to be helpful, but they're not my first choice to tackle. So in the column, I haven't placed eight or nine. I haven't placed eight and nine. And it can't be inside the 18 cage, adding up 17 with a one in here, because that's not allowed. So essentially, one of the eight or nines is in here followed by another 8 or 9 with one of, well, it's not 4, 1 or 3. Yeah, this is tricky. But even if I go with... Hang on. Uh, this can't be 8 or 9, so just think about... the. I don't have a 4, so in the column it's 1, 3 or 4. I don't have a 4. I'm also going to say I can't use a 1. Now, although the 1 can be placed inside the cage, it would require 17, and we've established this is not 8, 9. So there is no 1. 1 has to be up here, as does 4. So that's not a 3. That is the 3. And then in here, I have 3, 8, 9. That's not 8. That's not 9. Now, if it is 3, 8, that's 11, that would be 7. If it's 3, 9, that's 12, that would be 6. And I can't see anything that breaks that. In here, I have 2, 5, and 6, 7, not useful. I have 2, 5, and 1. The 1 is useful. That is 2 or 5. Now, this isn't 5 and can't be 2. So this is the second 2, 5, and this is 6 or 7, except it's not 6. That's 7, 6. Excellent. And the two fives are still not resolved. Actually, they are resolved. Pay attention. And these, oh, they, of course, once I place the six, I need 12 in here. So that can only be nine and three and then eight. Excellent. Right. Let's just carry on. Sudoku's working. That's nine. That's two. Technically, that can be five. And it's three or five. I mean, these are three, five, six. That can't be six. That can't be five. Three, five, or six in here. And these are four, seven, and eight. Seven and eight adding up to 15 doesn't work because that would require a two, which is not available. So this has to be seven or eight. There's a four in here. And then the question is, if it's four, seven, that's 11, and then it works with five. If it's 4, 8, that's 12. Excuse me. I meant to say if it's 4, 7, I need 6. If it's 4, 8, I need 5. I don't need 3, or I can't use the 3. That can't be the 4. That's a 7, 8 pair, so that's the 4. And these are not resolved. Yes, they are. 8, 7, 11, that means that's 6. That's three, that's five. That three gave me six and three. Excellent. Uh, then when I need one or three with a two, that's the two, that's the three, one, three. This two needs six or seven, eight, or nine. So it is six. Then I have a digit I can just write in, a four, one, four. I need a one, I need a four, Five. I need a seven. And if I've not made any other silly mistakes, that's an eight for the finish. It's a lovely puzzle, Gerhard, that I somehow managed to look kind of difficult, not intentionally, but I think that cage kind of really tripped me up. And then since, you know, I kind of never really recovered. And of course, not doing Sudoku, kind of my usual Achilles heel. Regardless, fantastic puzzle. Hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle and the video, and I'll see you back soon. Bye-bye for now.